I feel pretty darn fortunate to have had Stubbs Turkle in my life as a dear friend, as a mentor. And I was first introduced to Stubbs through his writing. I was a freshman in college and I read his book, Working, which is this extraordinary collection of uh, this kind of oral history where people are talking about their jobs, about their work. And there was such poetry in the everyday lives of these people. And I thought to myself, this is what I want to do with my own life, uh, is tell stories like this. And when I moved to Chicago, one of the first things I did, Studs, everybody knows him for his books, for his writing, but he had a radio show here in Chicago. He was Terry Gross before there was a Terry Gross. And he would interview people. He would interview artists, musicians. He had Bob Dylan, Dylan Mahalia Jackson. Jackson, you'd introduce, interview authors. And my dad, who was a novelist, had been on his show. And so one of the first things I did was to go to WFMT, where Stubbs worked at the time, and to get a, what was then a little cassette of the interview he'd done with my dad. And in that interview, um, I learned things about my dad that I didn't know. That was kind of the power of Stubbs. He just had this ability to draw things out from people. It was the first time my dad talked about his experience in World War II. He went on to write a memoir about it. But, and then I got to know Stubbs because when my first book came out, There Are No Children Here, I was invited on his show. And I remember going on his show and he had a copy of my book and, and everybody was on his show. Every author will tell you this. It was just marked up. It had uh, post-it notes throughout the book. Um, and he just, he his mind was a still trap. He just knew everything in that book. And it was an incredible interview. And in fact, at one point during the interview, he says to me, he says, you know, there's this line here that this young woman says that is eulogy at a funeral that there's no tomorrow isn't promised to us. And he said, I remember that line. And he pulls up a, he had pulled a uh, interview he had done maybe 20 years earlier with somebody in public housing who said the exact same thing. And that was, that was studs. He was so engaged, so fully there in the moment. And so I got to know studs. Again, I feel really fortunate that I was able to count him as a friend. And there were two things for me that I took away from my time with him. One, he was an incredibly generous person. I remember whenever I'd go visit him at his home, he would have on the floor by his, where he was sitting, a, a, a pile of manuscripts and galleys sent to him by mostly young writers asking for him to blurb their books. And he would blurb virtually every book that came his way. Um, and I've that has stayed with me. Um, he was just a really generous individual. And the other thing, of course, is, you know, there's this, I think Studs taught us all how to listen, but I think there's a, a misconception about sort of how Studs listen. Anybody who spent any time with Studs knows Studs wouldn't shut up. He loved to talk. And I remember thinking the first time I met him, how is it this guy can listen to people? How does he interview people? And I realized that for Studs, that listening was not this passive exercise. He wasn't some empty vessel that people were just spilling their stories into. He was actively engaged with them, you know, debating and asking questions, laughing with them, crying with them, arguing with them. And so I, I came to realize that that is the art of listening, is it's this really active engagement with someone, someone else. Um, and that was the beauty of studs. Um, I've got to say, I really, really miss his presence in my life. Um, he just was, he was so encouraging. I just remember whenever I'd see him, he'd ask me what I was working on and he'd have questions for me and he'd be excited about it. And I, again, I was just inspired by his work. I had to really, I think for me, so one of the greatest honors of my life was to be asked to write an introduction to the reissue of Division Street, his very first collection of oral histories, a, a, a book that still came out in the mid 1960s and still has such resonance today. Um, but, you know, Studs, you know, with his generosity, his capacity to listen, um, uh, man, he taught me so much uh, and I, I miss him dearly.